Hey, what's going on everybody? Jamie McDonald here. Today's video is going to be a behind the scenes look at how I captured photos like the ones I'm about to show you right now. So, pretty interesting, isn't it? I shared some of these photos just the other day on Facebook and Twitter and had several people ask me, okay, how do you make a shot like that? So we'll go over that today. Uh, tools you're going to need for this. Well, one of your Olympus cameras, obviously. I'll be shooting it today probably with an EM-1. And your lens selection, it, you know, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to have uh, one of the pro-grade lenses. You don't have to have one of the primes. You can be doing this all with kit lens. Um, so our aperture for these shots will probably be right around the sweet spot for most lenses. You know, it's going to be around the 5.6 area, somewhere right around in that general ballpark. Um, I might experiment a little bit with like shooting a little bit wider, like all the way down to f1.8, because I'll probably be using the lens that I'm shooting this video with, the 17 millimeter f1.8. Um, so your camera, a lens, any lens doesn't matter. Um, light bulbs you're gonna need some light bulbs don't go stealing these out of your supply cabinet because if you do like I did last year and run out of light bulbs in your house your wife or partner might be asking you where all the bulbs went so I got some cheap bulbs at the local store here I got a four pack for like two bucks um, probably ten years from now you won't be able to make this kind of photograph because incandescent bulbs are going away here in the United States and I'm sure everywhere else in the world as well so yes incandescent bulb Compact fluorescent does not work, obviously. We need a filament inside the bulb in order for this to work. Um, you're going to need a lamp. I picked this one up at the local Walmart for like seven bucks. Uh, this is a perfect type of lamp for this because it's basically just a pedestal. So our bulb will just kind of be floating out in space. The base is black, which is going to work great because we're going to be shooting in a darkened room. So you can kind of see how this works. It'll go in the lamp. Before we go any further, let me just tell you, before you go and start breaking bulbs to get rocking and rolling on this project, do a test first, okay? Plug your lamp in, put a non-broken bulb in, determine what is on for your lamp. You want to leave it set to on, and I'll explain shortly here. So, lamp, bulb, and this is what the bulb will look like when it's broken. There's really not a whole lot there. Ideally, you're gonna wanna break the bulb in such a manner that the filament does not break. Once the filament is broken, you're, it's not gonna light up, it's not gonna burn out. We're capturing the bulb as it burns out. A light bulb is a vacuum sealed environment, which means the filament inside here, when electricity is flowing through it, is gonna just smolder when it's inside here. That's what makes it glow. Uh, once you release, uh, once you get rid of the vacuum, I guess I'm trying to look for the right way to say this here. Once this no longer becomes a vacuum and oxygen is allowed to get into there, it just burns. So that's where we get the look that we're going to generate from this. Uh, one of the biggest things is going to be how do I break the bulb? A lot of ways to do this. Uh, you could break it with a hammer, like maybe wrap a cloth around it and just tap it with a hammer to get it to break. You do that and you really run the risk of damaging the filament inside of the bulb. Something that I've been doing lately is taking some um, yarn. My wife is big into crocheting lately, so I've got lots of yarn to play with. And I will wrap yarn around the base of the bulb. And then I will put rubbing alcohol on the yarn, saturate it, okay, so that the yarn is saturated with rubbing alcohol. Light the rubbing alcohol on fire. Maybe hold the bulb like this or like that. You kind of want to keep the fire going all the way around it okay and then you can just turn on the faucet in your sink and just drip a little bit of cold water onto it and you're going to get that uh, major contraction on the glass from it cooling down from the cold water and it's going to shatter all the way around it's one way to do it the way that i did these tonight was i simply held the bulb like this and lit a lighter underneath it in one spot only and just got it really hot and then I had a paintbrush that had cold water on it and I just touched the paintbrush to the bulb and it shattered a good portion of the way around it. And then I just set the bulb into a box and just tapped on it with a screwdriver until it shattered all the way around. And then I separated the base with the filament in it away from the main part of the bulb. I didn't break a single filament that way, so. 
you'll play around with it, you'll figure out a way to do it. So I'm going to stop recording here, I'm going to go break a few more bulbs, and when I come back we're going to have the light fixture all set up, and I will explain to you why it matters that you determine on and off for this, okay? Be right back, i got to go break some glass. All right, you guys, so I've got everything set up now, and I told you I was going to explain to you why I think you should uh, determine whether or not your lamp is in the on position and then set it to the on position. I'm doing all of this just by myself. If I had somebody helping me here, I wouldn't necessarily have to go through those steps. But in order to make it easy to not only trigger the lamp and my camera at the same time, um, what I'm going to be doing is keeping the lamp plugged into just one of these little you know multi outlet strips that has an on off switch to it okay and it'll be turned to off and then I'll have it plugged in and then the lamp plugged into this and then what I can do is I can coordinate you know basically at the same time as I uh, depress the shutter I will flip the lamp or the the surge strip here to on which will set the lamp to burning out uh, I'm in manual mode at f5.6. I ended up using the 25 millimeter for this just because I didn't feel like taking the 17 millimeter off of my video camera here. So basically, I'm gonna set this to like a high, like a high speed sequence mode or whatever you want to call it. Basically, the the sequential drive mode, I guess. Um, and then again, I'm at f5.6, 400th of a second. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of count to myself one, two, three, and on three at the same time as I flip the little on switch here on this little surge strip, I will be depressing the shutter button on my camera. As you can see, it's mounted on a tripod. My background isn't anything fancy because this should be enough to where my shutter speed is fast enough, the background should just be black. And the bulb burning out is what's gonna be all the light in the image. And I also set the camera to manual focus and I pre-focused on the filaments themselves. That's where I want the image to be sharpest at. So I'm going to stop recording video for a second, get myself all set up, and then when it's ready to go, I'll actually try to roll video of me doing this. I don't know how it's gonna look in the dark, I guess we'll find out. So hold on just one second while I get set up. All right, so as you can see, we've got our setup in place. I'm just gonna go through and fine tune a few things. Some of my cam the camera settings that I'm using right now, I'm in manual mode. I've got a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second. My aperture is at f5.6. You know, again, kind of the sweet spot of the lens here, sharp as possible. Um, ISO 200, I like to shoot at the base ISO, keep it as clean as possible. And I've got the live view display up so that I can magnify my view here. And I moved the lamp because I did a test shot before I started rolling here and get back on target here we go. We'll tighten the head down. And I'm in manual focus mode here, so there I get nice and sharp. Perfect. Uh, again, you notice like the background here, nothing super crazy cool, no fancy backdrop. This is just literally on a bed in a spare bedroom. I've got uh, some corrugated plastic down kind of as a, a working surface here. The shutter speed is gonna be fast enough with all the lights off, with the aperture, ISO, and shutter speed where they're at. The background should be pretty much just black and we're only gonna see our finished product here. So no need for a fancy studio setup for this. I'm shutting off my uh, little studio light here and I'm gonna turn off the bedroom light here, the overhead light. And we're gonna get rocking and rolling here. So I've got the lamp already plugged in to my surge strip. And I will basically, oh, and I've got the uh, camera on sequential mode. So it's basically just gonna fire off a bunch of shots. So here we go on three, you guys. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Like a machine gun. And we'll let that process here for a second, and then I will review a couple of the photos here and see what we got. The cool thing with this is, is every single time you do this, you get something completely different. That's awesome. <laughs> and that's the winner right there. 
yeah <laughs> so these are so much fun uh, i hope you guys enjoy doing this as much as i do it's a great winter time i'm stuck indoors kind of project for you to do so stay tuned i think i've got a couple ideas for a few other different uh behind the scenes videos that i can do of a few different things that i've kind of played around with in the past if you like the video give it a thumbs up drop some comments subscribe tell your friends hey check this video out it was kind of cool you might like it uh, the more viewers and subscribers the more motivated i am to put stuff together like this so as always you guys thanks for stopping in and take care